Hello and welcome. Here's another Rocky IV drawing. This is the second time I'm doing this. The first time I did it, I only created a short time-lapse video with some music. And a lot of people wanted to see a longer narrated video, so here it is. First I'm going to say a few words about the materials. And this is going to be in charcoal. I'm going to be using Kohino charcoal pencils, Kohino soft charcoal pencils and Kohino silky black pencils and in addition to that I'm also going to use some willow charcoal, some charcoal powder and the usual blending tools and erasers. So I already had a sketch here and uh, the composition is basically these three men in the middle with Rocky and Drago touching gloves and the, and the ref in the middle um, and just a little bit of background, it's mostly a dark background with a few lights. So now I'm going to put down some charcoal powder. I created this charcoal powder by sharpening one of my pencils. So I'm going to spread that around using a combination of brushes and my fingers. The reason why your fingers work really well for blending or for covering large areas is because the texture of your skin in combination with the natural oils allows you to push the charcoal dust into the paper and uh, push it around covering large areas. Of course your fingers don't allow for great precision, that's why you have to work on the edges a bit later using a combination of pencils and and erases. So of course since I'm right-handed and I want to minimize smudging I'm going to be working from left to right and I only covered one portion of the background and uh, and then I moved on to drawing Rocky. I'm going to start with his hair and this lower part of the hair is a little bit darker and the the top edge is lighter because it's catching light from uh, from above from the lights so i'm just gonna dab on this with my finger to create these darker areas and then refine that using brushes and pencils and i'm going to be gently pushing uh, the charcoal powder towards those lighter areas because I don't want to leave them completely white and then I'm going to be working on those with with my erasers. So I'm trying to create a little bit of texture there and just uh, cleaning up the edge a little bit. Right now I'm just working on the hair and uh, another thing that I like to do when I have a dark background like this I like to go around the edges of my subject go over them with a darker pencil uh, just so that I know where that line is so that I won't go over it uh, while I while I uh, shade the background. I zoomed in a little bit closer so that you can see the work on the detail. I'm going to start working on some of the facial features. Uh, when I have, when I already have a sketch like this, and I usually, when it's something this complex, I usually like to obtain the initial sketch by using the tracing method because it's uh, far less time consuming. It's not super precise, but it works. And when I have a sketch like that, I like to put in the darker details, the darker bits first with a sharp charcoal pencil. And then after that, I do some larger shading, shading of the, of the larger areas, and then I go back to refining the details. So now I know that the face looks a little bit funny, uh, but I'm going to be working on it and refining the shape or the shapes until I get them to look uh, the way they're supposed to. Because this is a scene from the movie, I'm going to be trying to achieve some likeness, especially with the characters of uh, Rocky and even Drago. Uh, the ref is probably not that important, but I'm going to put some effort into his face 
as well. Covering a little bit more of the background and then moving on to the face. Shading the left side of the face which is facing away from those uh, lights which will be in the middle. So uh, this is going to be the shadow side. Notice that the left side of the ro of Rocky's head is also catching a little bit of light, but not quite as much as the as Rocky's face. And uh, I'm pushing the charcoal to the edge of my main subject using a flat brush. Sometimes I can use tortillions for that as well. Clean edges are very important here. You don't want to make them look blurry. It's very important to also to have a um, fairly smooth background that doesn't have texture in it, which would be too distracting and uh, taking away the focus from the uh, from the main subjects. Now I'm just adding some more detail to the hair using a pencil because so far mostly I, I mostly worked on it with blending tools and softening that a bit with a tortilla making sure that the edge looks good and then going around the edge with a pencil eraser pulling some highlights especially on top because the light is mostly coming from above but we have multiple light sources in, in this scene because of the lights uh, above so it's going to be a little bit confusing just want to add these highlights at the top I'm using a pencil eraser by the way it's a Kohinoor eraser and a pencil which can be sharpened you can also use uh, some some other there are also Faber-Castell similar erasers there's, there's also the Dumbo Mono Zero Eraser, which is probably the best one. Just shading around Rocky's eyes, making sure that I get that uh, almost sleepy, tired look that Sylvester Stallone always has. <laughs> and uh, moving on to the mouth area. Always checking that the shape, the overall shape of the face looks good and that the edge between the face and the background looks clean. There are a lot of nice shadows here on the face which uh, actually make it easier for you to explain the shape of the face. But you can't be tempted into drawing black and white areas, black and white contrast. You need to try to preserve that range of value and to make sure that um, that you have fewer of those completely white and completely black areas because when you have a nice range of value and when you have a nice range of those mid-tones which are in between the darkest and the lightest ones that's what really helps you explain the shape of, of the thing that you're drawing you can see that I'm using a combination of tools to, uh, to refine those shapes sometimes I use a brush to soften the texture sometimes I use a pencil to add a little bit of texture or put in some details Sometimes I use an eraser to take away a bit of value. The thing to remember about uh, erasers is that they are mostly your drawing tools when you're working on complex realistic drawings like this one. They're not used so much for cleaning up and correcting mistakes. They're mostly used for drawing, for drawing lighter shapes and areas of lighter value. Moving on to Moving on to Rocky's body and his muscles. First, I'm putting in some of these darker areas, uh, which signify the transition between the or the edges between the the arm and the and the body, the torso. torso. And then uh, putting in some shadow areas on the uh, below the larger muscles, uh, such as the shoulders and the uh, 
the chest area and then filling in a bit more of the background here to the right because like I said the truck wall is very messy and I have to work in a certain order and uh, I want to try to minimize smudging so I normally work from left to right and from top to bottom um, I'm, I'm going to be working a little bit more on the body now um, I also have some roofs in the background there I left a white line there but I'm going to be cleaning up those edges a bit later I'm going to shade the larger portion of, of the Rocky's body now with a piece of willow charcoal I'm going to drag that piece of willow charcoal over over these muscles, over these large muscles, and just putting a little bit more in those areas where uh, where we have areas of darker value, and putting a little bit less in those areas where where the, where his body is catching a bit of light or reflecting a bit of light, and where we have some highlights. So I want to make it look like. His skin is kind of glistening because he's sweating. He's probably been uh, uh, doing a warm-up, preparing for the match. So I want to make it look as realistic as possible. So right now I softened all of that with a brush to create some kind of a mid-tone. But I left out a few of the lighter areas, as you can see. I forgot to uh, do these details on the ear, so I'm going back to finish that. And did a little bit of additional cleaning up around the uh, around the ear and uh, and the chin area and the jaw area, as well as these edges to the left. Now I'm going to use my erasers and blending tools to pull some highlights. I wasn't really happy with the shape of the chin and the nose so I did some minor corrections there and added a bit more value to these lighter areas of the face because I felt that some of them are a little bit too light. I don't know how much the camera captures all of it but um, there, there are certain details that I see while working on the drawing in real life uh, which can't be captured on camera. There are always some details and textures that that you won't be able to see. So if you're wondering why I'm spending so much time working on some details and not much seems to change, that's because um, it, it does make sense to me because there's certain things that I see that you probably can't. Uh, my recording equipment isn't perfect, obviously. Now, I'm pulling some highlights on the shoulders here. They're catching some light from above. And like I said, his skin is supposed to be reflecting a bit of light because it's glistening, he's sweating. And um, just uh, making sure that the, that the highlights on the on the right are a little bit lighter and the ones on the other side are a bit more subdued and I also added a bit more shadow with a charcoal pencil because the charcoal in a com uh, the compressed charcoal from a charcoal pencil is darker than the willow charcoal I often go over the shaded areas the, the areas that I shaded with a with a piece of willow charcoal I go over them with a with a charcoal pencil to make them a little bit darker and I did that with the shoulder area with the shadow on, under the under those deltoid uh, muscles of the shoulders because those are quite massive and they're casting a bit of shadow uh, casting a bit of shadow onto the arm area I have to also create a sufficient amount of shadow between the arm and the sides of the body here so that the arms would stand out. I'm mostly happy with the way <coughs> the head and the neck looks. I'm mostly going to be working on the body now and just adding some darker areas here and there where I feel I need a bit more value. 
I'm also going to need to worry about creating contrast between uh, not just uh, Rocky's body in the background but also Rocky and the ref because at one point I was thinking about leaving out the ref completely maybe that that would be even better but this is what I've eventually decided to do so I'm gonna have to include the ref um, just adding some shadow areas to the arms and as you can see they look quite muscular obviously both both Sylvester Stallone and Dolph Lundgren were on steroids for these roles they were looking very very muscular so this is a scene from Rocky IV uh, a fight between Rocky Balboa and Ivan Drago the, uh, the, uh, the Russian or the, the Soviet boxer and it's kind of a revenge fight for Rocky as well because because Apollo Creed was killed in, in, a, in a boxing match with, uh, with Drago earlier so it's a classic it's a it's a Rocky classic. I'm sure you you've watched it, or most of you have. I did a lot of refining on his arms here, pulling some highlights, trying to define uh, the muscles of his arms, the tricep, uh, the triceps area, the uh, the forearms, which are a little bit darker at the bottom because they're facing away from the light source, they're facing down. Now I'm just putting some details onto his shorts and he's wearing... Um, his shorts is, uh, has a flag pattern or flag colors on it. So I don't, I don't have colors, I only have black and white. I'm going to have to try to explain the color of the of the shorts using only black and white just adding a bit of shadow here and creating some of these small folds in the waist area Uh, <clears throat> pulling some highlights with a pencil eraser so my process is always following more or less the same pattern I first uh, do, draw some lines uh, with a pencil then I do a bit of shading either with a charcoal pencil or with some vine charcoal and then work on it with my blending tools and then I all highlights uh, with a pencil eraser as much as I can so the the erasers they actually allow you to work from dark to light but there are of course limitations to that you can't always erase clean lines sometimes you just have to take what the drawing gives you I'm working on the background here in the middle above the ref's head it's safe to move on because I've done most of the work on Rocky so now I'm moving on to the ref I'm gonna shade around his head just to make sure that I have a, an edge there and then I'm gonna <clears throat> start refining some of the details of of the ref's appearance so working on the hair first and because the hair is a little bit curly, I try to imitate its appearance and texture by dragging my pencil to create some random texture. I'm having a little bit of trouble with this top edge here because it's uh, very irregular but at the same time I need to make it clear uh, where, the, where the hair ends and the background begins. 
Now for the eyes and the facial features. These are a little bit small, especially for charcoal pencils, so I'm going to do the best I can. And try to refine them as I go along. Now I'm using two different types of pencils here. Uh, the charcoal pencil I'm using is uh, Kohino Jaconda Extra Soft Charcoal Pencil, which is the darkest one that, that I have and the softest, softest one that I have, but in addition to that I'm also using the uh, Kohino Silky Black Pencils, which are a mixture and they're a little bit harder and they're a little bit more like colored pencils so they they allow me to work on the details a bit more easily right now I've shaded the darker side of the face because the right side of the face is a lot lighter it's lit from the from one of the lights in the background but much of the left side of the face in the middle and the middle of the face is in the shadow quite a few wrinkles here and just working on the facial features trying to define this cheekbone area the, the this transition between the uh, between the light side and the shadow side Like I said, it's a slightly smaller face here, it's a little bit more difficult than the other two, but it's starting to take shape as I'm using a combination of my pencils, the softer ones and the harder ones, as well as my blending tools and erasers. So I'm slowly, um, I'm slowly refining some of these details. I'm going to move on to his shirt, I'm mostly happy with the face. Maybe it has a little bit too much of that texture, but I'm going to refine that as I go along. So moving on to the <clears throat> moving on to the clothes first, cleaning up the edge. Making sure that the edge of his shoulders and and, and that he is really clean and stands out against the background. Now I'm drawing some folds in this shirt, especially around the armpit area, and then around the chest area where, where the shirt is buttoned. And this is where you would expect some of, uh, some of these folds. There's also a little bit of shadow under the neck. So a few folds here on the chest. Shading the lower part of the of the shirt, that belly area a little bit more with a combination of some willow charcoal and a brush, making that a bit darker. And trying to figure out how to make Rocky's body stand out against the uh, against the ref's body. because I, I don't want these shapes to be confusing, I want the viewer to be able to discern what is what. I wasn't happy with the face, I, there was a little bit too much texture, I softened it a little bit and I took away a, a bit of value here and there. Now I'm using a pencil eraser to pull some highlights on these folds on the shirt to make them look more three-dimensional and to make the whole shirt up here a little more three-dimensional <clears throat> I'm going to draw his pants now, they're going to be black this is good because it'll allow me to create some contrast uh, with the other two characters Now, in this central part here, where they're touching gloves, 
this is going to be a little bit complicated because there are lots of uh, lots of confusing shapes there but I'm going to try to kind of simplify it for the viewer so working on the gloves now uh, notice how uh, with these gloves we have uh, in the reference photo they are red and the uh, those white areas those white parts of the gloves are a lot lighter but some, some, some of them are a little bit in the shadow so I can't leave them completely white and sometimes I will deliberately make them a bit darker so that uh, one glove would stand out against the other one so sometimes you have to take some liberty and um, artistic license as it were and add more value in some areas than you really see in your reference so that you could so that you could explain certain shapes a little bit better uh, moving on to Drago's gloves and again I'm working with a charcoal pencil around the edge of Drago's body to the to the left of him and I blended that with my finger now I'm working on the rest of the ref's shirt adding a bit more value here gently building up the value with a brush and now adding some suggestions of folds in the in the clothes maybe a few buttons here and there one of the easiest ways you can draw these folds when you're drawing clothes is just to use a, a tutelian with a little bit of charcoal on it so you can use it as a drawing tool it picks up a little bit of charcoal and you can use it to pull some um, marks that aren't quite dark and quite as defined as, as the ones that you would pull with your pencil but uh, they still work it really depends on what you're trying to achieve so I'm just uh, once I'm happy with the shirt I'm moving on to the gloves the gloves are kind of smooth and shiny so the best way to imitate that effect is to use willow charcoal and push the material around using brushes creating some highlights in certain areas where where there will be where some light will be reflected so first i'm going to push this charcoal gently pushing the charcoal away from the darker areas to the lighter highlight areas or the shiny parts of the gloves and then because this is looking a little bit flat now I'm going to be adding a bit of value to some to some areas making increasing the range of value making some parts of those gloves are a little bit darker depending on the light source and also a few suggestions of folds uh, in the gloves that, uh, as well because they're also bending around the fingers and the wrists and now I'm using this pencil eraser to pull some highlights on the gloves making them look, uh, making them appear more shiny and uh, also more three-dimensional trying to capture that leathery appearance of a boxing glove and cleaning up the edges so that one glove stands out against the other so that we can tell uh, which glove belongs to Drago and which one belongs to Rocky but going in with willow charcoal first is very useful because uh, willow charcoal as well as vine charcoal is easily manipulated you can easily push the material around adding or taking away a bit of value and making uh, whatever it is that you're shading darker or lighter as necessary and even creating some paint, uh, painterly effects in the process uh, by pu pushing the material around with a brush time to move on to Ivan Drago 
Now I'm going to work around the left edge of the face, trying to make sure that I clean that up first and that the overall shape of the face looks close to what the actual character looked like in the movie. Uh, the nose and the top of the hair still needs a little bit more work but I'll refine that as I, as I go along. I did a bit more background at the top and I'm going to do some blending with my finger. You can see that I did most of the blending on the background with my finger because it's the quickest and easiest way but it's not going to be the only blending tool that I'm going to be using on the background obviously. Now I'm going to work on uh, on Dolph Lundgren's facial features a little bit. So when I compared the two versions of this drawing, the earlier one from 2018 and this one, I think I did the faces a bit better. I think I achieved a bit more likeness and I put a little bit more effort and patience into them. And also I think that my edges are a bit better, especially uh, the top edge, the contrast between the the top lighter edges of their bodies and heads against the background. As for the anatomy, it's more or less the same. didn't really do uh, do a bad job at it the first time around but I think the faces will be better this time now this is the tricky part now that I'm doing some initial shading and drawing some of the doing some initial work on uh, Drago's facial features his deep set eye sockets, uh, they're, they're in the shadow. And now doing a bit more shading of these larger areas, laying down, laying down the shadow areas on his face. And also at the same time trying to capture the expression of his face, which is almost kind of, um, he's looking down on his opponent. Uh, like he's underestimating Rocky or something. That's the emotion I'm trying to convey. Uh, a little bit of work needs to be done on the hair. So on the sides it's very very short it's kind of spiky at the top, a lot longer at the top. So I'm going to try to make this transition look as natural as possible. Some of the work, as you can see, was done with a brush and willow charcoal. Um, some, of, some of the work will be done with those harder silky black pencils for the details. And some of the finishing touches will also be done with an eraser. Right now I'm still fidgeting with this eye, trying to make sure that I that it looks as close to the original as possible. And, and around the cheekbones, I want those prominent, sharp cheekbones and uh, an angular-looking face of Dolph Lundgren. Now a few more details on the hair and the on the sides of the head where the hair is a lot shorter. It's always a little bit more difficult and time consuming drawing short hair. Or at least that uh, I feel it, that's the way it is. Now still working on the face, shading the right side of the face a bit more. And refining some of the facial features. Now to work on the top of the hair here a bit more, I have to cover some of it first with some charcoal so that my eraser would work better. Now I'm going to draw that spiky hair at the top. 
there are a lot of these smaller fine strokes that I need to pull uh, with my pencil eraser to get that uh, spiky hair appearance but it's starting to work but it can't really work unless you're creating contrast with the background so the background needs to be darker considerably darker for these lighter hairs or groups of hairs to stand out and I'm even refining the edge a little bit using a pencil but mostly an eraser and then I'm kind of pushing the eraser into these darker or shadow areas trying to make it look like trying to make that transition between the light side of the hair and the dark side of the hair and try to make look, make it look like some of the individual hair and some groups of hairs are sticking out and catching a little bit more light from the light source here on the sides I need a lot of these really short marks, really short strokes that look like really short hair and it's also a bit darker it's also a bit darker on the sides than on the top uh, mostly because of the light source but also because of the color of the hair I suppose refining the appearance of the ear now and some other details I'm going to do a bit more shading on the neck I'm mostly happy with the way the hair and the face looks and now there's a little bit of shadow under this jaw area and I'm pushing around the material I lay down with willow charcoal I'm pushing that with brushes and then going back in and doing a bit of refining using pencil erasers now I'm moving on to the body I'm going to do a bit more work on, on Dolph's anatomy I suppose you may be wondering how long the drawing took in real time I think it was under four hours it was definitely less than four hours closer to three and a half so um, I'm using the same approach that I did with Rocky's body I first put in some of the darkest bits like around the armpit area um, the shadow between the body and the arm and I put some shadows around those small uh, muscles around the ribs and under the pecs and now a bit more shadow under the shoulder muscles so I like to create some indications of where some of the darkest bits are that helps me navigate through the drawing more easily and it helps to make things uh, a little bit faster to get things moving I soften these with a brush and I don't worry too much about the edges here because uh, the edges are softer here you don't have as many clean edges now I'm going to add a bit more background here on the right because I've done the face and the neck so I suppose it's safe for me to do that part of the background I'm trying to push the charcoal to the edge carefully using my finger not to go over the edge too much although eventually I will do some cleaning up with a pencil eraser another reason why it's useful to do the background here is not just to def define the edge but it also helps you gauge how much value you need uh, on the on the body as well on your main subject as well now I'm putting down a bit of willow charcoal just shading this um, not worrying too much about texture it looks a little bit ugly at this stage but I'm just going to soften everything with a brush I'm going to do a lot of blending and you can see uh, how easy it is to move willow charcoal to blend it and to create these smooth transitions of course it works better if you don't press too hard and if you don't push the material too hard into the grain of the paper 
That way you can push it around with a brush, create some painterly effects, create some interesting transitions, and then once you start refining the details, you can easily uh, work with erases, remove the value, add some highlights, and things like that. Adding a bit more value as needed, gradually increasing the, the value in some areas. In this case, under the shoulder muscles, under the pecs, on the abdomen area, which is uh, a little bit lower and uh, hidden away from the light source. Now I'm back to cleaning up the, the edge on the right and making these uh, rear shoulder muscles, rear deltoids stand out. You can also add a few veins here and there going across the front delts and the chest area and adding some more of these highlights on Drago's body because uh, his body is also reflecting a bit of light, it's also glistening, he's also sweating They've, all, they've both been warming up and now they're ready for the fight. Another vein here. Not sure how convincing it looks. You don't have to overdo it with the details. The shading of the larger areas is obviously more important. But a few details here and there improve the overall appearance of the of your piece of your drawing shading the forearms and, and the arms the edge on the right is a little bit blurry I'm gonna to have to clean that up just adding these highlights using a pencil eraser and now adding a bit more value making sure that the shoulder area doesn't look too unnaturally dark in comparison to the, to the rest of the arm. So um, you kind of need to stay consistent with your range of value. You can't uh, you can't just make one part of the body a lot darker without an explanation. So the whole body has to interact with the light source in a similar way, in a way that makes sense, I suppose. Now I'm going to be adding some more darker touches here using a charcoal pencil. Like I said, the compressed charcoal from charcoal pencils appears to be darker than willow charcoal and it kind of appears to be more permanent uh, when you blend because it sticks to the paper a bit more than willow charcoal does. As for the background and the edges around my main subjects, I'm using a couple of different strategies. Sometimes I try to push the charcoal to the edge using a brush, sometimes a tortillion, sometimes I use these harder silky black pencils, although they are not quite as dark as charcoal. Sometimes I just use an eraser to create a clean edge. I'm now working on the trunks, on the shorts, and just adding a bit of value, base value, using a, a willow charcoal, and then going back to working on the background. Shading the background in the lower right corner, using my finger and then cleaning up cleaning up the ropes um, to create a nice lighter shape in the background and now I'm going to add some details here to the shorts um, adding some shadow areas where there are some folds I'm going to do some blending after that and then maybe just a few gentle highlights with an eraser. But mostly blending now. Now here in the background there are some small lights.
I'm just going to draw these using a pencil eraser, starting by making them lighter in the middle and then kind of um, less, less prominent around the edge and fixing their shape a little bit. So I don't need to do too much in terms of the background. I can dab some parts of the background with a clean brush to create some suggestions of shapes in the background, like maybe some spectators and some other lights and things like that. So I just dab, dab, dab with my brush and you can see some lighter shapes starting to appear. It's a nice little trick that you can use when you don't want to use an eraser. Although on some of these lighter details I have to use an eraser, obviously. I also did a bit more back, uh, blending on the background using a large brush to soften things a bit. And now I'm shading the glove area a little bit more because I realized that the white part of the glove around the wrist was too light and I needed to add a bit, a bit of shadow. I'm just cleaning up some of the edges around, uh, around his body and the ropes and pulling some highlights on the shorts to make the folds in it look more three-dimensional. This will be one of my lower, uh, longer drawings, obviously. I'm working on these corners where, uh, which were taped down, which were secured with a tape, just filling those in with some charcoal. This is quick and easy now because the background is mostly dark. And just wrapping things up with these uh, finishing touches, with these final details. I'm going to put my signature in the lower right corner using my eraser. And now the drawing, I think, is mostly done. Just a few finishing touches here and there. And it's almost done. I think it's a little bit better than the first version. And I wanted to do this for, for the people who maybe want to see the longer narrated version. Of course, don't forget to check out my other videos. On my Patreon, I have lots of longer full-length videos. I want to thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye.